Hello YouTube and welcome to one of my brand new tutorials in this tutorial you're gonna dabble a little bit in some AI um, all it is is gonna be a turrets we're gonna look at make creating turrets and have turrets track player movements and fire off uh, projectile and all I'm using is the standard asset pure standard asset stuff so you can you can have a scene like this created if you like this scene um, just some yellow blocks there and a little coin over there is spinning and the script that's making it spinning is also from the standard asset and I've created a little script myself that just have the ball respawn when you fall off into the water so we're gonna just add some turrets to this and it's gonna be awesome so let's get into it so the first thing we're gonna do is create the turret and I'm just going to click on the ball and press F while my mouse is in this screen to get closer to this platform. And now I'm going to create the stand for the turret. Now your turret could look differently. Um, there's just one little secret and I'll tell you in just a minute. So let's create this turret real quick. Alright, and I have completed my turret, <laughs> a little basic little guy here. Um, so here's a little secret, it's very important, is don't have the turret stand and the turret head parent to each other. Make sure they're two separate items, two separate game objects like they are here. And go ahead and parent the the, the mouth of it where it's gonna shoot from and I just named my mozzle so what you would do is um, you just create an empty name this turret and then take the stand and the head and parent those to your turret that's what you want to do, but you don't want the head and the stand to be within the same um, game object. You don't want to parent it like that. You don't want that to happen. So when you move the stand, you move everything. No, you don't want that. You want it outside of the stand. So when you move the turn itself, it moves everything. But if you move the stand, the stand moves by itself and the head move by itself. That's the one thing I wanted to show you. Um, there's actually one other thing, is when you click on the head, notice that the direction of the blue arrow is the direction that you wanna put your mozzle. It's that, that same direction you wanna put your, uh, your mouth, your pointer, whatever you call it. Um, due to when we put the script on it for it to look at the player, that little script to make it always track the player um it considers that z position as the face of this um sphere so uh, you want to put that <laughs> in the right position that's the only other tip so now that we have our turret created the only thing left is to now create our turret script so i'll go to my script folder and start creating a turret script so uh, with my turret script created, let me go ahead and double click on it to open it up in my Visual Studio. Okay, so I'm assuming you know the basics of creating game objects and such and such and creating references. So we're gonna create a reference to the ball's position and we don't need the ball's game object, we just need the ball's position, which means just to transform. So this can be private. I'm sorry, target. We'll just leave it as that, transform, target. Um, we didn't define that it was private because by default, if you don't define that it's public, it's automatically private. Now I will create the awake function, which is called as soon as the game um, initialized. And in the awake function, I'll tell the game that my target equals 
we're going to find that game object with the tag um, player and we'll say dot transform because we're looking for the transform not the game object itself if you go back to unity you'll see that my ball this ball the tag is indeed player with a capital P and just make sure that yours is spelled exactly with that same capital P or whatever yours is tagged as so once we have um, once we have now set the reference up and target is now the ball or your player in the update you simply say transform dot look at and you see intelligence tells us that it needs a target uh, transform it's funny because we named our transform target so it's just right <laughs> the name target has nothing to do with it it's just the fact that it is indeed a transform let's save that and head back to unity now that we're in unity you don't want to put this script directly on the turret. You only want this script on the turret head. So, you go within your turret that you created, uh, game object, empty game object, and you go to the head. Because the head is the part we want to rotate. And we'll put our turret script on that head. And we'll play the game to see if it's actually tracking the ball like it should. Now that our turret is working properly and tracking the player, the next step now is just to create a spawning point for the projectiles and the projectiles themselves. Let's go ahead and do so. I'll just right click in this area to create a new game object and I'll create a small little sphere. I did say small little, didn't I? This is not as little as I thought. So I'll go ahead and scale it down because I want it to be smaller. Um, this is completely up to you. It's a little trick I'm going to do to align it properly to the point of this um, mouth is simply drag it and drop it on that muzzle. And I will zero out the position which will put which would put it exactly in the center. Then I'll scale it down. It looks about right. And I will bring it forward about right there. Maybe a little bit more. About right there. And then I will take it out of being apparent to that muzzle. So there is those two and I will rename this or actually before I rename it I'm going to duplicate it to click on it and then I'll click control C or control D sorry <laughs> control D control D to duplicate guys um, and then I will name this one projectile and I will name this one, the other one, I will name this one um, Projectile, um, let's call it Spawn. Projectile Spawn. So what does that mean? I will go to the projectile and check, off check this checkbox, which will make it invisible. So now the one that remains that we're able to see is the Projectile Spawn. Inside of the projectile spawn, I'll remove the uh, Fierce Collider, I'll remove the Mesh Renderer, and I will remove even the Spheres itself um, Mesh. So it's just an invisible point, and that's where I want the projectile to spawn. At that point, I will indeed parent it to my muzzle, just like that. This one now, I will bring it back into the game. 
by checking the box to make it visible again. And this is indeed the projectile. This one I will add a rigid body. And I am not going to use gravity on, I'm not going to use gravity on this projectile because I just want it to go. So here's the thing. <clears throat> I don't want to apply constant force because I want there to be a bounce. The thing about constant force is, let's, let's do an example for you. If my fist has constant force, I will go and I'll hit the wall and I'll continue trying to, I'll just be stuck doing this because constant force. If I apply force at the beginning, then it's just going, but it won't fall off and start drifting down because I turned off my use gravity. So just have that force until the force runs out. If it's a good enough force, it'll go boom. On impact, um, force is then diverted. Well, divert is probably not the word, but it now returns negative, which causes the bounce. And if there's an angle, boom, 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 whatever, until the force ends. So I won't apply constant force, so I'm not going to put any scripts on this except later on we'll probably put a script on it to tell it to destroy itself after a couple of minus seconds because we still have to do some cleanup um, but for now I think it's good and it's perfect the way it is so let's go ahead and take that projectile that we just created with the rigid body and drag it and drop it into one of our folders as a prefab now we can delete it from the scene gone now back to our turret script to set this up. In our turret script, we need um, two public game objects. So public game object, and this will be our um, projectile spawn point. It's a very long uh, variable name. So let's cut it down to pro spawn point. Next game object we'll need is the projectile itself. And we're good. We got a projectile and the projectile spawn point. Now let's create a variable. I'm sorry, not a variable. Let's create a function where we're going to spawn the projectile or fire it, you could say. And I'll go down to the bottom below the update function. And I'm going to create a new one. And it's going to be an i, I enumerator. Why? Because we want it to have a pause somewhere in between the amount of times it shoots. And I'll just say fire now as the name of my function and the function body. So i enumerator allows us to use a little command here that's called a yield. So we can yield, which like pause, and then um, we can wait for a certain amount of seconds, like uh, three. So before the script continues, right? So the cool thing about the I enumerator, um, when you call it, you got to call it in what we call a um, start quarantine. So we'll go to our start. And we'll type start quarantine, and then the function name with the parentheses, open and close parentheses, the other parentheses for open and close for the start quarantine, and of course, your semicolon, and you're done. So when game starts, it calls this. And of course, it will only call this once. Um, there is a couple of uh, invoked repeaters that you could have used here. Um, for example, um, there's invoke repeat, which you can give it a function name and how often you want it to repeat. Um, but we're going to use a while loop, guys. I haven't, I haven't used a while loop in a while. I know, that was corny. So we can say uh, while true. Well, that, that would make it. Let's create another variable. And this will be, um, let's create it public. It will be able. And we can say is able to shoot so is able to shoot we're creating this variable so that you can turn off your um, 
deterrent using some other methods later on in your game. In the start function, we'll tell it to be true because by default it is false. And now we'll create our while loop. So while, and we can say, is able to shoot. So as long as that's true, um, we're going to be doing some stuff here. So first thing is first, let's grab our weight. And you can see that without this weight, our function is always invalid. So that's why I enumerators require you to have that yield return. Wait three seconds. So after our wait three seconds, we're going to instantiate the object. And you know how instantiate work. You just got to say instantiate. Then the object you want to instantiate, which is um, my projectile. Then you have to tell it where. So instantiate where at my... Um, at my spawn point. And you know what I'll do differently? I'll make this a transform so I don't have to drill into it to, to, to get the transform from it. Now I'll show you what I mean without creating a transform yet. Let's do it. Dot transform dot position comma. And then um, what we need next here is the um, rotation. And since it's a ball, <laughs> the projectile is literally a ball, we don't care about the rotation, so we say um, quaternium dot identity, and that's it. Now this is this is long, and technically I'm getting back the game object, drilling into the game object, getting the transform, and then finally getting a position. When I could just not get the game object, just get the transform to begin with, and then. I don't need to say this. I just say spawn point dot position. So that will spawn the bullet. We're looking good so far. Let's save and go back to Unity because we have one other issue. It will spawn the bullet. The bullets will not go anywhere. So um, on our turret ed that has the script, you see we have the stuff here. We'll just check this to make sure it's true. Now it's looking for the projectile. Here's our projectile. Boop. And then the spawn point, which is right here. Boop. So if we play our game, um, every three seconds our bullet should spawn. Boop. This way. Boop. And boop. So it's, it's, it's doing what it's supposed to do, except no force. So let's go ahead and fix that right here. We have no way of tracking the projectile that we just spawned. And that's simply because we're spawning it, but we're not spawning it and keeping the reference to the spawn. So to do that, we simply go here and say uh, game object. And we say underscore projectile. And say equals instantiate blah 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 and at the end here just say as um, game object so it will look like this now we have a reference to that object that we spawn so now we can say object um, underscore projectile dot get component and remember we added a rigid body to it for this very reason get the rigid body component right and we add force to the rigid body component. In what direction? We don't have to touch any vector threes. We just tell it transform dot forward. And then we times this by a certain number. Um, let's just call this um, speed as a variable. And we'll go up here and make that variable so that we can kind of tweak it and modify it when we are ready. Um, I think a float is suitable for this. I'll just give it the same name, speed, so we are good. And we'll save and head back to the projectile. Head back to Unity. Head back to the projectile. So, um, let's try 800. And now it should shoot at me. Let me back up a little bit. 
see it shoots at me. Oh. Boom. You see the deflection that I was talking about? Boom. Deflection. But in your scene, you notice that projectiles are piling up. So you do need a cleanup script. And if you'd like, um, you can also use maybe an explosion. Which is all a part of the standard asset. And I'll show you how to do that right now. Okay, so first things first is the speed of the bullets are kind of slow. So I'm going to put mine up to about 1500. Next, I will go and create a new script. Clean up pro. This is going to clean up the projectiles. Just drag the script and put it on the projectile itself. Just like that. Then we'll open up the script. So let's give the projectile light. So we'll say destroy um, and game object. So it's going to destroy itself. And if you put a comma, you can tell it how long before. So we'll say about eight seconds and it destroys itself. Easy peasy. Um, another thing is we'll have it explode on impact. So we'll just create a public um, game object reference here. And we'll just call it explode for the explosion which you can find that in the Unity Standard Asset. I tell you, everything is in this asset. Um, then down here, we can just do a on collision enter. So if it hits anything, it's time to go boom. Um, if it hits anything, uh, we want to destroy it. We want to generate the explosion and destroy it. Now, we, want, we don't want to destroy it before we generate the explosion, so keep that in mind. Um, so we're going to create the explosion as a game object as well. So we say game object um, underscore uh, x flow equals, and then we instantiate it. It's time to create it. Um, explosion where we just say transform that position, which means at the position of the ball. So whenever it touches something, just generate that explosion there. And of course, again, the um, rotation doesn't matter. So we say quaternium dot identity. Oh, and also just add here as game object, just for the best um, code in practice. Um, at here now, we also want to say destroy and the underscore explosion after maybe two seconds and we want to say destroy um and just say game object so we destroyed this bullet on impact and it will put this destroy which is two seconds later in the queue to be destroyed even though the script holding this um even though the object holding the script is destroyed immediately on impact, it will still be able to carry out this command because we set this command first until it destroys itself immediately after. So this command kind of gets put in the queue. So we're cleaning up the balls and we're cleaning up the, um, the explosions as well because you spawn the explosion separately. So if you destroy the ball, the explosion will stay. So we got to tell it right there on line 18 destroy those explosions after two seconds and guys I think we're done the only thing left to do is connect up these variables so we go to the projectile and you can see that I have an empty slot here for my explosion and the standard asset actually has one so we type explode you say there's a mobile version and a normal version the mobile version is a nice little tune down on the particle effects to make it suitable for mobile that's all it is so let's test it out keep in mind them the explosion does have a knockback so it should knock you right off the platform oh so okay perfect we have a little um issue here which is fine and i'll show you what uh, is going on but you can see the knockback is there so when the bullet spawns again it's on collision that's happening um 
it might just be touching with this when it spawns it might just be spawned a little too close um, there's no need for this to have a box glider on it so we could just turn it off and that should fix the issue it's just there for visual appearance <laughs> so we'll turn that off and then oh almost got me so there we go now no matter how far we whoa it's really really strong dodge so no matter how far we go we got a bullet now seeking us seeking us out trying to destroy us and uh last thing i just want to show you how you can mass produce oh almost made it how you can mass produce these um turrets <coughs> really simple just turn it into a prefab now i'll show you how to do that in case you did not know this here this is why we put this empty game object and put everything into it so now you can just drag this into your folder to create a prefab Oh, let's go to my folder and just um, drag it into it. Let's drag it into the script folder. That's where I had the projectile as well. Um, and now uh, you can, yeah, you can simply just create as, as many as you like, just like that. So guys, thank you for watching this uh, quick little tutorial here on just creating um, simple little short, <laughs> simple little AI on turrets and tracking and projectile. This is impossible. Oh, <laughs> they got me in the air. Can I land, can I land on it? No. But yeah, it's a massacre going on here. And as I spawn back, it just takes me out again. Ooh. Guys, <laughs> if you enjoyed this tutorial or uh, you're a parent that's just looking for something like this for your child, do check out the online code coaching website where we do one-on-one -on -one private lessons um, because that's the best way to learn without the distraction and coaches can really um, focus on your learning habits and be able to teach you in the way that you learn not in a set curriculum that we expect everyone to be able to, to learn the same thing the same way um, and we're really flexible and there is a free trial no credit cards or nothing um, needed you simply just put your name and pick the day and pick the time and we'll meet with you and give you a free lesson to see if you like it all right Again, it's Leaky Mitchell, you guys. Have a good one and hope to see you in the next tutorial. Also, subscribe if you haven't to help um, just promote the channel and help us grow. All right, guys, take it easy.